contagion that is flowing through our veins in subtle, under-the-surface ways. Sooner or later, we will see the symptoms. In fact, I think we are starting to. But let's back up. Within the last hundred or so years, we have made incredible strides in production and labor-saving devices. And at first, the breakthroughs were so enormous that people couldn't even envision what we would do with all of the, quote, free time we would be creating for ourselves. Economist John Keynes said in 1915, quote, for the first time since his creation, man will be faced with his real and his permanent problem, and that is how to occupy the leisure. Am I the only one who will say that my main problem in life is not how to occupy the leisure? In fact, I say, what leisure? Keynes was vastly wrong. That's not what happened at all. In an article highlighting these developments, the Atlantic journalist Derek Thompson noted one large change that no one saw coming, and that's how work itself and our view of it has evolved. See, work jumped from being a means of material production to now being much more about identity production. In other words, work used to be about making things. Now, all of a sudden, work is about making us. We began to view our work as our reason for living, our purpose. A recent Gallup poll concluded that very thing, actually. Quote, like all employees, millennials care about their income, but for this generation, a job is about more than a paycheck It's about a purpose. When our work becomes who we are and we derive our ultimate value and meaning from it, it runs the risk of becoming our God, the thing we worship, bow down to, and become slaves of. And that's what they didn't foresee a hundred years ago, that we would actually find our very center and being in the hustle itself. We'd find it while we're busy finding our passion, while we're trying to life hack our way through life while leaving or bucking off anything that is uncomfortable, unpalatable, or unenjoyable because the hustle and our passion should never feel that way, right? See, when something is our God, we will give our all for it, and we will sacrifice everything. It's no coincidence that Americans, quote, work longer hours, have shorter vacations, get less in unemployment, disability, and retirement benefits, and retire later than people in comparably rich societies, as Samuel P. Huntington wrote. And a recent Pew Research report on the epidemic of youth anxiety noted that 95%, yes, you heard that right, virtually every single person who participated said that, quote, having a job or career they enjoy would be extremely or very important to them as an adult. It is the very thing we are all running towards to give us meaning, to give us life, and to tell us that we matter. Not to mention, this is even more pronounced by the impossibly high standards we set for our dreams and our goals and our work. Every person in my generation, millennials, is expected to not only have a job, but also have one that is cool, that is fulfilling, and reflects well on us. As Ann Peterson noted in her brilliant recent piece titled, How Millennials Became the Burnout Generation, we think we need to find employment that reflects well on our parents, that's also impressive to our peers, and that fulfills us. But Peterson continued, the problem with thinking your dream job is out there, so never stop hustling, is that it's a blueprint for spiritual and physical exhaustion. It seems others are seeing the same thing. Hustle is being put on notice, as it should be. The research is clear. Seven in ten millennials would say they are currently experiencing some level of burnout. 54% of us millennials would say we are chronically lonely and say that we always or sometimes feel that no one knows us well and 30% of millennials and Gen Z currently say they experience disruptive anxiety or depression. The pressure is too much. It's unrealistic, and it's hurting us. We're paralyzed while trying to keep up. So I say to hell with being anxious, lonely, and burned out. This isn't God's design. We are meant to flourish by the Spirit of God under the reign and rule of our King Jesus. Now, does this mean we won't be anxious ever, that we'll never be lonely, never be tired? Of course not. But we are children of the King and more than conquerors, and we have every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Do we believe, at least a little, that our lives would change if we fully embrace those truths and let them have actual weight in our lives? I think so. And this isn't just our personal anxieties, it's our culture and our generation at large. It's as if millions of us are on a treadmill, believing we're going somewhere when we're actually going nowhere. All that work, energy, and effort...